Good morning, and today um, we're going to start with um, the theme of lotus flower. I was looking in, as I was gardening and I was looking at all the beautiful flowers and thinking about the lotus flower and how it connects to yoga and how it is a representation of a spiritual and kind of a personal journey. And I don't know if any of you know the story of the lotus, but the lotus is a flower that grows for almost a thousand years. It can live for a thousand years. It's pretty amazing plant and it grows in the mud in a pond. And every morning, it, a shoot sprouts up from the mud and then these petals form around the flower. And as they open to the sun and that flower shines forward to the light and it's free of any mud or muck or dirt, the petals kind of protect it on the way up and it just shines beautiful for the entire day. And then at night, it closes back up and returns to the mud. And in yoga, the mud is sort of representational of all the challenges and suffering and kind of life experiences that kind of are the life lessons that we learn from. And the rising and coming into the light and shining and opening and blooming and blossoming is only, we're only able to do that as human beings through the experiences that we learn. So, and the light can, some people see the light as, as God or a higher being. Um, other people see it as rebirth and hope and coming from despair into hope and beauty. So I was thinking today, um, if we could just take this time in our practice to think about rising and opening our hearts and blossoming into the fullest version of ourselves today and letting whatever challenges we have in our personal journey right now just kind of take a back step and um, we kind of leave it at the doorstep and let this time be a time of just rebirth for you and kind of blossoming into um, your best self. So I thought we would start with a yoga mudra. So we talked last week about mudra being hand gestures. So the lotus mudra is holding your thumbs and your pinkies together, keeping your heels of your uh, palms together and just opening up those other three fingers, sort of like a flower. And just keep it at your heart center. You close your eyes and just gently bring your chin down to your chest. And just begin to focus on your breath. Try to find softness. Relax your hands and your forearms. And try to even out your breath, scan your body. Make sure your spine is nice and tall. Scan your face. Make sure you're not holding any tension. And continue to work on your breath. Feel the soft air flowing through your nostrils. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. And bring yourself into this present moment. And as mindful distractions come into your brain, acknowledge them and just bring your focus back to your breath. And remember that your breath is what carries you through this practice. So as you get distracted, 
or as you find a challenge in a pose, just soften your muscles by bringing your attention back to your breath. Find that rhythm, let that flow connect your mind, body, and spirit. On your next inhale, inhale deeply through your nose and exhale through your mouth, cleansing breath, big breath. One more, just like that. Exhale. And before you flutter open your eyes, let's make an intention together. That as we open our hearts in this Lotus Mudra, we're reminded that we have the power to be reborn no matter what our challenges in life are. Slowly bring your hands back to center. Flutter open your eyes and lift your arms up and overhead for a nice long stretch that start to reach like you're climbing for that ladder. Side body stretch, kind of lean over, keep your shoulders and hips parallel to me. Keep breathing. And then slowly rotate your wrists and bring your arms back down. Drop your chin to your chest. And let's just bring our shoulders up and back. Up to your ears and roll them back. Up to your ears, squeeze, roll them back so your shoulder blades come together. And up to your ears, shoulder blades back and down. Just relax your chin and just let your right ear fall over to your right shoulder. Keep your shoulders nice and soft. Let them just gently drift away from your ear. And just breathe here and feel a nice long stretch in the side of your neck. And then reach out your left hand, palm facing the back wall, thumb facing down as you just continue to stretch. And kind of reach that hand further back for a longer side stretch. And then gently release your arm back to your thigh, drop your chin back to your chest, and just let it hang there for a minute. And gently lift your chin on your inhale, and then let your left ear fall over to your left shoulder. And just breathe. Let gravity pull your head down. Make sure your spine is tall. And if your legs ever feel like they're uncomfortable or your hips are getting tight, then just readjust your position. Extend that right hand back, thumb down, palm facing the back wall, and push it further back, getting a deeper stretch. And then gently release that arm, bring the chin back to your chest and just let your head drop gently forward. And then begin to do some slight rotations with your neck. Listen to your body. Take it where it's comfortable for you. Nice and slow, just kind of lubricating that cervical spine. Don't overextend or hyperextend. Just do what feels good to you. And then slowly reverse it and go the opposite direction. And then on your next breath, bring your chin back up to neutral. And give yourself a big hug. Doesn't matter what hand is over top, just hug and maybe round your back, drop your chin a little bit, maybe pull your belly button back to your spine, do kind of a seated cat cow kind of a move, and then come nice and tall up. Open your arms, bring them back, put your hands behind your hips and lift up, chin up to the sky. So this is your cow pose. Exhale, bring your belly button to your spine, hug yourself, this time wrap it the opposite way. This is your cat pose. 
couple more of these on your rhythm. Open and extend. Belly button to spine and hug. And then gently release, come back to neutral. And then start to lean over to your right. Just walk your fingertips out and get a nice side body stretch here. Bring your left arm over your shoulder. And then walk your fingers back, use your core, pull up nice and tall. And start to walk your left fingers out. Let your right arm come over to your ear, bicep to your ear. And take this as far down as is comfortable for you. Just warming up those side bodies. And then slowly start to unwind your legs and find yourself to all, all fours. You can leave your blanket under your knees. And I'm going to take a minute because I forgot to mute you all. So hang on a second. So you're on all fours and let's do some gentle cat caps. Ready? Inhale, lift. Exhale, arch. Inhale, lift. Exhale, arch. And keep that going on your own breath. And each time, maybe getting a little deeper. Nice. And make sure, check your alignment, make sure your wrists are underneath your shoulders, your knees are underneath your hips, and you can't see your toes when you look through. And maybe begin to take a deeper cat cow coming all the way down, drop your hips to your thighs, your chest to your thighs rather, forearms to the mat and come up for chakra vakasana. So come draw your belly button to your spine, drop your hips back towards your knees and towards your ankles, drop your forearms, scoop up, lift your chin. Pull your belly button into your spine, push back, hips to your, towards your ankle, forearms to the mat, chest forward, head up, and take a couple more of these, maybe even rotating your hips back and forth, kind of waking up all those body parts that might be a little stiff. Let your breath guide you through this. Take one more and then I'll meet you in tabletop. And when you're ready, check your alignment. Extend your right foot out to the side, off your mat. And make sure that your pinky toe is parallel to the side of your body. And then engage your core, pull up nice and tall, arms up to cactus. So you have a nice straight back, your leg is extended, your arms are in cactus. Then lower your right arm to your thigh, extend your left arm overhead, 
and then gently side, side stretch. Keeping your shoulders and hips parallel to me. Don't be doing this, open it up this way so that you get a really good, nice, long stretch on your left side. Nice. Engage your core, come back up to cactus. This is where you're gonna need your block. So you're gonna put it out to your left and then you're gonna slowly start to let your body open up and grab hold of that block and extend your right hand so that your bicep is over your shoulder, over your ears. Nice long side body. And if you have an ottoman or a little stool or something, you don't need a block, you can use that. And if you feel that you can come all the way down, take your time, listen to your body, do what's right for you today. Engage your core, lift straight up. Take your hands behind your back, interlock your fingers, open your chest like the lotus flower. Let it shine open on this rainy day. And if that's too severe for you, take your strap and hold it behind your back and let that be what opens your chest. Your call, whatever you need today. And then engage your core, lift your, let your lead from your chest into your hips, start to come forward for a nice gentle stretch here. Let your arms go, drift up, drop your head down, breathe. Use your core, pull up, chest leads. Good. Release your shoulders and bring that right knee back to the mat. Set that block over on the other side. Get your strap ready if you need it. Nice and tall spine. Extend that left foot out so that it's parallel um, to the wall on your left side. Hips and shoulders are facing me. Shoulder blades are down your back, hugging your spine. Nice. Come on up to cactus and breathe. And then just gently come over, grab that left hand to your left thigh and extend your right arm so that your bicep is near your ear. There you go. Keeping your shoulders and hips to me, pulling your chest open. Nice. Breathe here, breathe. Find the softness in this pose with your breath. And then slowly engage your core, pull up straight up. Now gently start to make your way over to your right, using your core to support you. Left ear to left bicep. Nice long straight line here. Breathe. Keeping those shoulders, bring that right shoulder forward. Nice. Nice, long, straight spine. Use your core, come on up. Interlock your hands behind you. Or pull open your chest. Use your core for stability. And you're pushing on that outside edge of that right foot so that you have you're strong and then hinge at your hips, start to lean forward, push your hips back, bring your arms up, chin gentle, cervical spine gentle. If this is too much on your knees, come on out of it. And then engage your core, come on up. And come back to your knees, all fours. Let's just do one shoulder stretch. Let's thread the needle, extend your right arm out and just bring it behind your left forearm, drop your shoulder to the mat, and then breathe. Slowly unwind, set yourself back up in tabletop, extend your left arm out, Thread the needle, drop your shoulder to the mat. And then 
and slowly come on back up to all fours. Widen your knees, put your toes together, bring your hips back for child pose. Stretch out those forearms. Just let your head rest on the mat. Try to sink your belly further between your thighs, dropping your hips closer to your ankles and walk those fingers out so that you get a nice long stretch in your upper back. And then slowly come back to tabletop. Bring your knees back under your hips and then come all the way up to kneeling and step your left foot forward, your right foot forward. And you might want to keep your blocks handy on either side of your front foot. And make sure that your right knee is over your right ankle and you can see your toes. You're stretching your hip flexor, your psoas muscle right in here on your left side. So you want to scoop that front foot forward until you feel the stretch in your hip flexor. And you can use your blocks for support, bring them close to you. But most importantly, make sure that your right knee is over your right ankle. There we go. Shoulders are relaxed. Shoulder blades are hugging your spine. So you have a nice tall spine. You should just be feeling the stretch in your hip flexor. And then slowly starting to straighten that front foot and bring your toe up to the ceiling. Get the stretch in your hamstring. Try not to shift the weight over to your left side. Try to keep it even. Point that toe up to the ceiling. Feel that stretch in your hamstring. And then start to find that rhythm between both postures. Come forward. Nice. And pull back. Use your breath to guide you, set the rhythm. And maybe if you want to stay in one, one pose longer, if you feel like you need a deeper hamstring stretch, then feel free to stay there. Listen to your body and hinge at the hips on your hamstring stretch so that you can get a deeper stretch. And then on your next one, stop with your knee bent forward, curl your back toes, maybe walk your blocks out closer to your ankle. And when you're ready, begin to lift that back foot, that back knee. And if you feel strong, start to make your way up. Hands to cactus. Nice. Imagine your thighs spiraling in, core is tight, spine is long, shoulder blades are down your back. Hold here. Now bring your arms interlocked behind your back, if you can. Nice and strong, and start to hinge forward for a humble warrior. And lift, release your arms, come forward, grab your blocks, walk your right foot, your left foot forward, and just let your body hang forward for a minute in a forward fold. Soft cervical spine, maybe cross your elbows. Let your forearms hug together. Just take a nice gentle forward fold. Then bring your hands to your blocks, hinge at your hips, straight spine, engage your, your quads and come on up. Nice. Take a couple breaths, shake out, take a sip of water if you need it. And then we're going to start on the other side. So we're going to step our left foot back from this standing position. And we're going to come right up into crescent here. So check your 
knee, make sure it's over your ankle. Kind of scooch that front foot forward if you need to. So that your knee is over your ankle and you can still see your toes. Nice. Bring your arms up to cactus, engage your core, straight spine, shoulders drop away from your ears. Good. Breathe. Breathe. Don't let that knee, that front knee, splay out or go in. Try to be mindful of keeping your knee and your second toe kind of in alignment. There you go. Breathe. And kind of begin to interlace your fingers. Open your chest. Get your stable. Make sure you're stable. Root yourself into the earth with that front foot. Kind of feel the weight evenly distributed and then start to hinge at your hips and come forward. Use your breath. Engage your core. Come on up. Release your shoulders. Bring your hands to your blocks. Bend your right knee to the earth. And let's do that hip flexor stretch. So you might want to walk that front foot out a little bit. Make sure your knee is over your ankle. Shoulders are down away from your ears. So you know. And just think, think into the pose. Find softness here. And then on your breath, start to bring your hips back for a hamstring stretch, toe up to the ceiling. Might want to bring your blocks further back. And always be mindful that one side of your body may not be as fluid as the other. That's okay. Just take your time, listen to your body, do what feels good and begin to take that organic movement, that flow back and forth between hip flexor stretch and hamstring. Using your breath to set the rhythm. Maybe hinging at the hips and coming a little bit shoulder, holding forward for that deeper stretch in the hamstring. Nice. Gentle flow. And then bring your knees back to center. Move your blocks out of the way. Set your hands under your shoulders, curl your toes for your first down dog of the day. So when you're ready and you feel like you're set up, pull your hips up and back. Bring your biceps close to your ears. And just breathe. Maybe walk your dog a little bit, pump your heels. Stretch out those calf muscles. Keep your biceps near your ears. Keep your arms long so you're making an upside down V. Let your head just hang so you have a soft cervical spine. And then come to stillness in this pose. Continue to push your hips back. And a couple breaths here. And then your call, either walk your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands. Bend your knees softly, just hang in a forward fold for a minute. And then engage your core, lift all the way up. Hands all the way up and overhead, and then hands to heart center. And let's find our mountain pose. So stand up nice and tall. And make sure that your feet are rooted into your mat. You can lift your toes and feel all four corners of your feet completely rooted. Just like the lotus flower is rooted in the muck of the, of the mud, make sure that we are rooted 
nice and tightly into the earth so that we can stand up nice tall and then rise up all the way up with your arms. Engage your core. Bring your hands to cactus. Make sure your shoulder blades are hugging your spine. Your hips are nice and neutral. You're not hyperextending them back or forward. And then when you're ready, you can either bring your hands to your hips, you can hold on to the wall, or you can just stay where you're at and start to begin to play with your version of tree. Turning that right knee out. Either bring your hands to heart center. Move them out here. Find your dristy, which is a couple of feet in front of you. And then maybe grow your branches. Pull up nice and tall. And then slowly release that foot to the earth. Shake out and get set up on the other side. When you're ready, make sure to check your feet, elongate your spine, pull your shoulder blades down your back, and then begin to climb your tree. And don't be afraid to use the wall or a chair or whatever you have handy near you for support. And then do explore your tree today. Notice what's going on in your body. See where you can soften. And then slowly release that foot to the mat. Shake out. And I'm going to stay in this direction, but you face the side of your mat so that you can extend your feet wide, toes pointing straight towards me or towards the side wall. You want your um, toes paint facing forward. Nice and tall, hands at your hips, shoulder blades down your back. Keep a nice straight spine, hinge at your hips, start to take a forward fold. And you might want to have your blocks handy. You can put them in front of you. You can walk your feet out for a deeper stretch. And this begin to hinge forward for a nice, gentle forward fold. Wide leg forward fold. Let your head drop. Find softness in your quads. Don't let them tense. Push your hips back. And then start to walk your hands over to your right side. For a nice side stretch. And then take your hands back to the other side. You should feel it behind your, in your hamstrings, behind your leg. And then walk back to center. And then begin to bend your right knee and take some flow between both sides, just gently stretching the insides of our legs. Keep your hands wherever they need to be, on the block or wherever, and just have a gentle movement back and forth. Use your breath. We want to get as much organic movement as we can so that we can lubricate our joints Make sure that we can move more fluidly. And then come to stillness back to your wide legs forward fold. And then slowly bring your heels in. And you may need to walk your feet closer, engage your core, and lift up straight for goddess pose. Hands to cactus. Toes are pointing out. Hips are sinking down. And then up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Put your shoulder blades back. Nice tall spine. Down. 
and up. Try not to lean forward, try to keep a straight spine. Straight down, knees over your ankle, and up. Try not to extend your bottom out, keep it nice and long. Last one, out, and then heel toe your feet back together. Woo! Are your thighs talking to you? <laughs> All right, turn to the side of your mat, step your right foot forward, left foot back. Nice and tall spine, extend your arms for warrior two. Knee over your ankle and breathe. Gaze is forward over your right hand. And just sink into that front foot, but don't let your knee come over your ankle. And then inhale, pull that front leg back. Exhale, bend. Inhale back. Exhale, bend. Inhale back, exhale, bend, stay here. Begin to lift that front arm up for exalted warrior. Your left hand is on your thigh. And then come down for extended warrior. Bring your forearm to your thigh, your left arm up over your head, bicep to your ear. Inhale, lift that back arm, raise the front arm. One more time, that sequence. Inhale, up, exalted warrior. Exhale, forearm to thigh, bicep to ear. Breathe. Inhale, straight up to warrior two. Bring that left, right foot forward, toe forward, and then switch positions. Extend the left toe forward, sink into that left leg. Make sure your knee is over your ankle. Nice and tall, gaze is over your left hand. And then let's start that movement. Pull the knee back and then bend. And back. Use your breath. And bend. And back. And bend. Let's take an exalted warrior now. Hand on your thigh and back. Left arm is up. Your gaze is up at your left hand. Exhale. Come back. Forearm to thigh. Bicep to ear. Pull your right shoulder, your left shoulder forward. And then come back up. One more time with that flow, exalted warrior. Extended side angle. Forearm to thigh. Bicep to ear. Nice long side body stretch. Come on back up, all the way up to warrior two. Gazes over your right hand, left hand. And breathe. And walk your toes in, whew, all the way in. Take a minute, take a sip of water, and then slowly make your way down to the mat. Good work, ladies. And find your way. Slowly in staff position, sitting up nice and tall. So your legs are together, your back is strong, your toes are pointed to the ceiling. You're gonna engage your core and you're gonna slowly make your way all the way down to the mat, but your core is doing all the work. Toes are up, you might wanna take a blanket with you. All the way down nice and slow. Good. And you might want to take, have your blocks handy and your strap handy. Take the blanket and use it on underneath your neck for support. Good. Take a minute here and just check in with your body. See how you're feeling. 
<sighs> Try to tuck your shoulder blades under your back, towards your spine, opening your heart. And just relax a bit. Scan your body. See if you're holding tension in your thighs or your hips. And just kind of gently breathe into those areas. And just let them soften and melt into the mat. And then slowly begin to bend your knees, bring your heels towards your bottom. Keep your knees parallel to each other. And if you have your block handy, put the block between your knees. You don't have to squeeze it, just hold it in place. Let your hands rest at your side. And then we're gonna, instead of doing a supported bridge today, we're gonna use our core, we're gonna flatten our spine and lift our hips up to the ceiling. And if the blanket is too much on your neck, you can remove it. And just try to get a nice arch in your back. And then slowly release your back to the floor. And then gently begin to push your pelvic backwards, lift your spine, your, your lumbar spine up, your hips shine forward. Breathe. And try to lift your hips as high as you can. Use your glutes and then gently come down. Two more like this on your breath and your rhythm. Take your time. And if this is too much for you, you always have the option of putting the block underneath your sacrum and just doing a supported bridge. Last one. And then slowly release. Remove the block from between your legs. Give your uh, knees a hug and just kind of let your give your start your lumbar spine a little massage by rolling around. And then bring your feet back down to the mat. Take your right ankle over your left thigh. Let your right knee splay out. Bring that right heel as close to your bottom as you can. And you can hold here in this supine pigeon, or you can lift and grab hold of your left thigh and have a deeper stretch. Take whatever version feels good to you. Try to be gentle with your cervical spine. Be mindful of not hyperextending your neck. Take a nice, relaxed pose here. And even though you feel the stretch in your hips, try to find softness in your shoulders. Don't be yanking that leg up. And if you feel like your shoulders are coming off the floor when you're trying to hold your thigh, just relax. Or just bring this foot back down to the earth. Just be kind to yourself. Listen to your body. Do what feels good for you. And then slowly release that foot back down to the earth. And take your left ankle over your right thigh. Let your left knee splay open. And then find your version of pigeon. And stay here or hold. And you might notice on one side, you feel like you want to hold your thigh. On the other, you just want to leave it your foot on the earth. Do what feels good to you. 
You want to feel sensation, but not pain. Scan your body. Take the time to breathe into those areas where you might be holding tension. Just let your body melt into the mat. And then slowly release your leg, grip hold of your strap. Extend your right foot up, put the strap behind the ball of your feet. And just extend your foot straight up in a 90 degree angle. And your left knee can be bent to support your lower spine or it can be out, whatever feels good to you. If it's bent, don't let it splay out, let it shine like you have a light on your kneecap shining straight to the ceiling. Point your toe, don't be hanging onto your strap, just let your strap gently be the guide to hold you, hold your leg, support your leg. There you go. Just get a nice long stretch. And then begin to shift the straps into your left hand and just cross the midline just a smidgen, you want to stretch out that IT band, which is on the outside of your leg. And breathe. And then slowly bring it back to center. And this time, switch hands, put it in your right hand, and let that leg splay all the way over. Now you can take your block and support it underneath your thigh or underneath your um, calf, whatever feels good to you. Try to keep your hips on the earth. Try to keep your shoulders and hips in alignment. Try to keep that left knee straight up. Remember that light is shining straight at the ceiling, your kneecap. Use your core, pull that leg back straight up to the ceiling. Bend your knee, release the strap, and bend your left knee. Put the strap on that foot. Straighten it straight up. Toes pointing towards your head. Keep those shoulder blades on the earth. Keep that right knee pointing like a headlight, shining straight at the ceiling. And just breathe here, try to soften your, your quads. And then slowly shift the strap into your right hand and just cross the midline, keeping that right knee straight, stretching the IT band on this side. Try to find softness here. Don't let your shoulders lift off the earth. And then slowly change, change the straps to your left hand and then begin to open it wide out to the side, support it with a block if you need. Keep your hips on the earth, shoulders on the earth, right knee straight up to the ceiling. Just a stretch on the inside of your thighs. And then gently use your core, bring that leg straight back up to the ceiling, bend your knee, release the strap. And give your knees one more big hug. Maybe take a bit, have a baby, 
whatever last pose you want to take before your shavasana. And then when you're ready, begin to relax, soften your muscles, prop a blanket under your knees or under your cervical spine. Take whatever comfortable shavasana pose is right for you today. And just continue to focus on your breath. Scan your body. Try to be mindful of the sensations you're feeling. Bring your attention to your toes. Tighten them and let them relax. And the arches of your feet contract and relax. And use your breath to bring your attention to your calves. Tighten your calves. And then relax. Feel the warmth of your breath washing over your body. Let that warmth and that sensation of relaxation circle around your kneecaps. And then your thighs. and your hips. Continue to inhale and exhale. And let that feeling of warmth spiral around your rib cage. I think it's soften and melt into the earth. And then up to your heart center. And exhale. And then inhale, bring that warmth up around your shoulders and down your arms, past your elbows, past your forearms, around your wrists, and down your palms into every fingertip. Inhale. Exhale. 
You feel that warmth come up through your neck, around your jaw and face, past your ears, across your forehead, completely encompassing your neck, head and shoulders. Your body is completely relaxed. You feel warm and nurtured. You are bathed in gentle darkness. Now imagine a tiny seed Bring it to your mind's eye and watch as it begins to sprout. Every inhale feeds the seedling. And now imagine a tiny uncurling leaf. And then a second. And then a third. Inhale. Exhale. And imagine these leaves centering over your heart with each breath. The plant grows larger and larger until it covers your entire heart like a blanket, a warm, soft blanket. You feel loved and protected. From the center, a spot of light appears. Inhale. Your breath gives it life to grow. Uncurling petals of the most radiant hues begin to form. Slowly, one by one, the petals of a lotus uncurl. With every breath, a new petal. There seems to be an infinite number of beautiful, delicate petals. all stemming from your heart center. This lotus flower represents your own peace and happiness. Inhale. Exhale. It holds the innate yearnings for peace and happiness of others. And as it grows from you, it spreads out into the world. Every breath you give and receive with a loving intention spreads peace and joy into the world, cultivating happiness within yourself and within all those whom you meet. The roots of the lotus grow deep and strong. The flower, by all appearances, 
seems to be delicate, yet it is very strong and has the will to live for over a thousand years. The flower is warm, a rare occurrence. The lotus plant has the ability to regulate flower temperature. So even though the wind blows cool, the flower remains warm. So too, the warmth of the heart though sometimes it may seem weak, is always strong. It will guide you through any of life's challenges. Its warmth is never wavering. Feel this. Picture the beauty. Experience the peace of the lotus. Inhale. Exhale. Repeat these phrases in your mind's eye with me. I am strong. I am resilient. I am filled with light and love. Begin to bring your awareness back into the room. And when you're ready, slowly make your way into a fetal position on your side. Take your time. As we move into this posture of rebirth and new beginnings, May we take example from the Lotus and start each day fresh, filled with light and hope, emerging from the lessons of life through the mud and struggles of our current situation and blossoming into the beauty that we were all meant to shine to the world. Slowly begin to make your way to a seated position, hands to heart center, eyes still closed. From my heart to yours, thank you as always for sharing your practice with me. Namaste. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much, Marianne. You have a beautiful gift. Um, I, I am just practically in tears of peace and joy. So thank you for your gift. Oh, thank you very much. You know, in yoga, we say that um, the teacher is, is in here. It's in your heart. So really the lessons that, um, that, or the experiences that you feel come from your willingness to open your heart and to allow yourself to be vulnerable and to absorb where you are. And the, that really is where the, where the energy that you feel. I mean, we share 
and I guide, but really it's our willingness each individually to open our hearts to the experience that, that is really the lesson. So thank you for being coming with an open heart and blossoming like the lotus. That's right. Thank you. Uh-huh. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful day.